how do you find a Mint State 67 or 68 Lincoln Memorial cent? Most people know those coins sell for the big money. Those are the grades that you want for most Memorial cents. If it's not 67, it's going to be 68 or 67 plus. So I'm going to talk about that in this video. Now, I'm going to try to make it brief, but this might get a little lengthy because grading and trying to find these coins is very difficult. That's why they're worth so much money. So stay with me and uh, we'll get started here in a little bit. I want to remind everyone about GoToCoin Auctions and CoinZip.com. You can find coin shows, coin dealers. You can connect here and buy coins. Also, my website, PortsmouthCoinShop.com. I am trying my best to keep inventory on the site. Really, guys, I appreciate the sales. But like I said, if you have anything that you need or want that's not on the site, I do have it in stock more than likely, but you can always send me a, an email. And my email is right here. PortsmouthCoinShop at gmail.com if you need have any questions. So when you're looking for grade, or let's say condition grade is what they're called, when you have a Mint State 67 for a common date memorial cent and it's selling for a thousand or five hundred or even more than that, then that's what they call a condition grade. So that's what you're looking for are condition grades here. They're not particularly rare coins, they're just rare in the grades that PCGS and the NGC puts on their holder. Before you get started, before you even think of looking at coins, you need to do some research. You need to have some tools. And I'm going to show you some things that you need to know here and you need to look at. First, you've got the PCGS price guide for Memorial Sense. You need to open that up in your tabs. Then you need to come over here and do the same thing on NGC on the Lincoln Memorial Sense for their grades and prices. The reason is that it's going to depend on which grading company you're going to send your coins to, okay? Because sometimes the values are different. The other tools that you should be looking into are heritage sold auctions. So one of the things you don't want to get caught up in is how much they're actually listed for because this is retail. You have a 1959 that grades 60, it's a 59D obviously, and that makes a difference too. If it grades 67, 225, none have graded 68 or 69, but then you've got plus. There's no guarantee you're going to get a plus. It's hard enough to get 67, but this is the whole problem here. So you've got this coin, and you think it's really nice. Well, what if you send it off and it only grades 66? What if it only grades 65? Look at that. Now, there is a way around this kind of, and I'll explain that in a little bit as far as cost is concerned, but you need to go into PCGS and NGC, if you can't find it, you can even call them. They have tiers on what they charge to grade modern coins and certain coins. Okay, and I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the submission and how to avert some of the cost here in a minute. So first off, let's say you got the the prices here and you got the 59D and see how much different it is. Doesn't look like they have any of them graded to see. They do it a little bit differently. So 59D and MS Red. 67 is only 135 in an NGC holder. 27.50 and 66, but it's $12.65, so we have the same price there. So you want it to be in a PCGS holder with a 67 grade, don't you? Right? I mean, maybe. Well, the best way to know that is to actually come over to Heritage, and you're going to look at. I've got it set here for 67, and you want to look at what they've sold for in the past. So I've got a tab open for 66, and a tab open for 67, and then a tab open for 68. Some years are really common with 67, so you have to get a 68 or a 67 plus. So what we're looking at here, we want to try to find a 59D that's actually sold that's 67. So we can put, type in 59D there and see how much they've sold for in a piece of just here. See the plus grade, 1920, 144, 79, 79. So they're not selling what's on the price guide. Okay, so really you've got to look at the values here. And that's the main thing. Sold auction values are going to be your best friend when you're doing this. You don't want to get caught up in seeing this $2,450 or this $10,500. or That's just not realistic. If you get that, you're going to be very lucky. Now, one of the things that people have to understand is that finding these coins is very difficult. I have a lot of coins, and I go through a lot of coins, and 
I, I've not really jumped into this much. I tried it uh, in the past uh, with a few rolls that I had over the years. I had actually had milk crates full of uh, rolls. And there's a few things that I learned that I'm going to share with you here. We had bank wrap rolls from the 50s, 60s, and 70s and 80s. And I went through every one of them. And I mean, with, like I said, they were milk crates, just filled up with milk crates and in boxes. Dad had put them back since the 70s and the 80s. And I didn't really find anything. It seemed like these rolls, the coins sometimes are often brown. They're beat up, spotted, uh, you know, you name it. I, I just don't, these kind of rolls here for grading coins, I just don't recommend. Now, some people might disagree with me, and that's fine because maybe there's exceptions out there. Varieties, though, I mean, you can do that. These sometimes are less toned because they're not in that paper. Uh, the paper rolls can often make them tone, but see on the ends, I mean, there's, there's toning. Might be kind of hard to see, but on the end there, there's toning. But usually, they're pretty pristine on the edges, as you can see there. But still yet, they were rolled up. Rolled coins were counted coins. They went through counting machines, and they get damaged, and they get banged on again. So not only did they get banged on at the mint, they got banged on at the place where they're, you know, getting rolled up. So then you have rolls like this. And these were probably either in paper rolls at one time, stuck in here, or someone cherry-picked them out of mint sets and put them in rolls. There's always that possibility. Or went to a dealer and picked some, you know, rolls out. But really, it's hard to find some really good coins in these rolls that are actually great. I'm not saying you shouldn't try it, but you really need to know if they're cherry picked or not before you even start that. Mint sets. Mint sets is probably a, a place where you can find some, but it just seems like they're just really beat up in those as well. You know, I mean, I know it looks nice on this video, but you can see that mark right there on the shoulder if you look at it. That's from another coin. And that's what you run into because they were also banged around and stuck in these sets, and these sets were not took care of often. People just bought them as, and they sling them around, and some of them go through dealer hands after dealer hands. I don't know how many of these sets I've looked through. And, you know, like I said, you, when you're looking at these coins, they're in the plastic, and they're very difficult to see. But what you're looking for on a coin, and I'm going to show you some better images here of some grades, but you're looking for any tiny little nicks and ticks because that takes away from the grade most of the time. But I'm telling you, you're going to see some coins here that have those abrasions on them and mark some other coins. And you're going to be like, how'd that get that grade? Well, that's part of this risk right here. And that's why I'm going to share something with you that I think that, you know, it's going to, it might help with that cost. So I'm looking at this coin and I, I can see through, I can see strike doubling on it, uh, which doesn't make it a double die. And then I'm seeing marks from other coins. I mean, it looks good through the plastic. But if you remember my last video, I showed you a clean Morgan dollar and what it looked like behind plastic and what it looked like without the plastic. So this plastic can mask a lot of uh, different marks on a coin. And some people might use a microscope or whatever, but I can see it pretty well. I'm using, um, this is what I use. It's a, H, it's a Harris and Company 16X loop. Okay, that's what I use. It's a little more magnification I probably need, but it's just one of them that I like. And it's also going to depend on how close your eyesight is. These are small coins. You're not just going to grade these very easily, and you're not just going to send off a bunch of coins and get 67s all the time. You can see how much they're worth, and that means they're rare. The populations are low. So I have these rolls, and the thing about these is that they were literally cherry-picked or hand-picked. The guy went through and just sat around when he was retired, and he went through coin after coin and selected these. So this has got the best chance of me finding something like a 67. Probably going to get 66 on most of them. Might get some red browns. That's another thing. you got to watch out for spotting. You don't want to get red brown, and that's a problem with paper rolls and some of these coins that's been handled, sneezed on, breathed on, nicotine, whatever it is that can cause them to turn red brown. But I can show you what I've got here. And it's heavy. Lincoln cents are really heavy, but he cherry picked these. And probably one day I'm going to do a video and I'm going to go through them myself when I get some time. And I'm not going to spend time going through every one of them, but I'm going to show you something I'm going to send off. So now let's get over here to um, what this is all about. <laughs> this right here 
And I know it's not a memorial scent, but it's the only 66 that I have. Okay? So it's a 66 Lincoln scent. Now, everybody's like, well, how in the world, if 66 is worth, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that in a 54S wheat scent. So someone's like, okay, if it costs them $30 to grade it, why did they do that? Well, they were trying to get a 67, but that leads me to the cost-saving method here, or at least it can be. But this method here, is the, what I'm talking about is bulk submission. It's only going to work if you do bulk submissions on a regular basis throughout the year, okay, because you're trying to save costs because it does cost to send off. So first, what we're going to look at, PCGS bulk submission. PCGS bulk submission is basically $12 a coin. You have to have five different dates and you have 100 coins total. So 20, basically 20 coins with different dates and mints, okay? So you want to handpick 20 of them and send them off. So what they do is, is if 60% of the coins submitted meet or exceed the minimum grade, you're only charged $12 a coin. So if you do get to 65, you're breaking even pretty much, but you got your time. You want to get better than 65 coins. If it doesn't meet the minimum grade, it will return to you unholder with no charge. If less than 60% exceeds the grade, each holder coin will be charged $12, while the unholder coins will be $5. So if they don't, if less than 60% of your coins meet it, you're going to get charged $5 for it. So you really want to be able to cherry pick a bunch of coins. This is not an easy method. There's no easy way to get 67 coins, is what I'm trying to tell you. On NGC, it's, it costs less. Um, I know that I think on most of them it'll be about $9 and something per coin. It's a little cheaper than PCGS, but you have to, to $299 to get the Elite so that you can get the bulk submission rates and labels down here. Okay, so $299. So you have to take $299 and then take 100 coins times $9 and something or whatever it is. You want to submit more than just one bulk submission to actually make this worth it. But at least $9 and $12 in a coin, if it, they do meet the 67, it's not so bad. But the problem is you're going to have at least 60% of those coins, at least 60 of them, that grade 66. And now you've got to sell them because you're going to have multiples. So what I'm trying to say is, is that you, you can do the bulk submission, which is what I would recommend for this. There's just no way in the world you're going to spend you know, that much money on a coin whenever it starts at 15, 18 bucks at modern coins, and then you're going to have your shipping and your time and all that in it. So bulk submission is where it would be at. So as far as getting that out of the way is concerned, let's look at a couple coins here. Let's look at the 66 here. Let's look at a 92. Now this is a close AM, but the point of it is it's still a 66 coin. You really can't see what you need to see on it. But here, I'll show you, are the little marks. I can see marks on this coin here and here. And you're going to see, this is a linear plating blister. I don't want to be fooled by that being a mark, but you've got to look around the coin and there's focal areas. Some of these areas in here are focal areas. You want a coin that is early die state. Now that's your better chance. Hopefully you can, that coin's not been banged up as much either, but it has some nice details. PCGS 66. So you come over here to 67, we'll open one of them up. And there's really not going to be a lot of difference between a plus and a 67, but you definitely want it to be red. That's one of the things, and it's hard to see that in some of these images, but here you go. Here's a mark here, a mark here, a mark here. And you're going to see this a lot. It's going to be very difficult to try to grade your coins using these images. I can go over this all day long and show you example after example after example. And we're going to see coin after coin after coin that doesn't look the grade particularly compared to other coins of a lesser grade or of a, of a higher grade. You're going to run into that. And that's just the way it is. I, I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did. Um, I'm going to do, like I said, uh, uh, bulk submissions in the future. And I'm going to share them with you. So we're going to look at a 68 coin here. And this is a 1982D. And I'll tell you right now, I have found a nice roll of 82D large dates. And they end up getting red brown. I don't know why this didn't get red brown. But I mean, sometimes it's going to really frustrate you. But you can see there's less marks. This coin kind of looks like there's split plating on the, it's actually like a push plating. It calls for a little bit of die deterioration. The plating didn't adhere to the zinc planchet very well. But you can see there's a little spot right here. Some people be like, how in the world did I get 68? I don't have that answer. I don't have it. I just don't. I wish I did. I wish I could do a video and say, this is exactly how you do it. But there's just no way. I mean, I just recommend open up these tabs that I recommend. You go to Heritage. Open up the 66 tab, the 67 tab, and the 68. Go to eBay. Go to a dealer. 
try to buy you some examples that are low uh, cost. Try to compare your coins and, and don't use too much magnification, but you know, try to try to grade them that way and then find 20 coins of five different dates of mints so you have 100 coins. Maybe try the bulk submission you know, and see what you get. You know, I'd love for someone to do this and tell me what they get for these Lincoln cents. And like I said, I plan on doing this for you. So anyways, I hope maybe this helped you a little bit understand how to find maybe a 67 or a 68 or even a 66. 66 are more realistic. And then you might have that chance if you send enough in, you'll get that 67. It's kind of a matter of uh, picking the dates and the mints that are worth actually submitting. In other words, I can show you is if there's any 66s that are worth maybe submitting. So you can go down through here on the 66 column and scroll down and see if there's anything like the 70s small date, uh, you know, 71. Of course, double dies and things like that are going to be worth it. But if there's any 66s that you can see that are common, you know, that are not double dies or whatever, maybe that's what you do. Look at the 74S. I mean, it's 70 bucks in red. So, you know, maybe just pick that coin. Because if you would get a 66, it's even worth more. So, you know, try to find the dates that are worth the most. Uh, dates and mint mark combinations. So, thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, and comment. Do click that little bell beside the subscribe button so you get notifications. And have a great day.